All right, so we're here with Professor Reeves at Smith College. Um, so our first question is: Is genocide still occurring, and is it is it just isn't it just happening in far-flung regions that aren't our responsibility? Well, those are two very different questions. Um, the question about whether or not genocide is still occurring seems to me not to have the urgency that the question about genocide did when I was writing in mm -hmm. early 2004. Mm -hmm. Um, it really doesn't matter at this point what we call it. Uh, it did matter, I think, early on when the possibility of humanitarian intervention, military intervention, to stop the killings was still uh, still on the table. But with the UN's decision to create a hybrid force that, that really took uh, the possibility of any other military action off off the table. Um, it would have been enormously difficult to protect civilians in an area the size of Darfur uh, in 2006, which is probably the last time that uh, non-consensual mm -hmm. military deployment could have been considered. Um, but I will say that if you look at the Genocide Convention of 1948, it's clear that the Convention considers many things besides killing people to be genocide. Uh, I tend to highlight uh, the provision for deliberately inflicting upon a group conditions of life calculated to bring about their physical destruction in whole or in part. That whole or in part phrase is key, and it appears twice in the Genocide Convention. You don't have to have as your goal the extermination of an entire people, but a substantial part. What we have now is continuing displacement. Uh, there were 300,000 plus displaced in 2008. There were another 150,000 displaced by this past summer. These add to uh, an obscenely large number of displaced persons. Um, 2.7 million in Darfur itself, another 250,000 plus in neighboring Chad as refugees. These people are uh, being subject to conditions of life calculated to bring about their physical destruction in a whole or in part. And so in that sense, I think genocide does continue. Um, I've taken a long enough time answering that first question that uh, uh, to give me your second question again. Um, isn't it just happening in far-flung regions that aren't our responsibility? Well, Darfur is a long way away. There's no question about it. Um, but either we evolve as a species, evolve morally, so that we can respond to the suffering of those whom we don't know, who are different from us, who are far-flung. Or, I believe there's there's, um, there's something wrong with the species if it can't evolve uh, to register distant suffering. Mm -hmm. um, the genocide of the last uh, hundred years, uh, whether we're looking at the Armenian Genocide or uh, the Nazi Holocaust or Rwanda, Darfur, uh, Bosnia have had greater or lesser proximity. The ability to affect the outcome of the genocide has been greater and lesser, depending on the nature of the genocide we're talking about. But it really shouldn't matter that the people of Darfur are remote, black, Muslim, poor, and they don't sit over any natural resources of great value. If we can't, as I say, evolve morally as a species in which those don't become disabling conditions for people who are suffering uh, such such destruction, uh, it's, it's a, very difficult to ex accept that uh, that we're flourishing as a species. So can you talk a little bit about why the United States 
hasn't been acting more um, about genocide? Is it that we don't care about genocide or that we don't know that it's occurring? Well, the United States, in the form of um, former Secretary of State Colin Powell, declared in 2004, September, that genocide was occurring. But he said something really quite extraordinary immediately after announcing it uh, on the basis of a study that I know very, very well, I know some of the participants, um, said that nothing new follows in the way of U.S. policy which essentially threw it in the hands of the UN Security Council uh, with two veto-wielding members uh, extremely unlikely to do anything about it, uh, namely Russia and China. So that produced a commission of inquiry, which predictably, uh, for political reasons if no other, found that genocide was not occurring. Um, this was a commission of inquiry that published its uh, findings in January 2005. Um, this was a disastrously reasoned document, at least a section on genocide. It was very long and very little of it was given over to that question. Um, the United States Congress voted unanimously in 2004 summer to declare that genocide was occurring. Executives, uh, the executive branch, both in, under President Obama and President Bush, declared it to be genocide. So we've known. Uh, some human rights groups have called it genocide, others have not. Uh, Physicians for Human Rights, a group based in Boston that I work closely with, has declared it to be genocide. Uh, human Rights Watch had a very strenuous internal debate and found that it was. Uh, found they could not come to consensus. Uh, actually, one of the women who was a participant in that internal debate went on to publish an article in the Fordham Law Review, which is deeply compelling as uh, an argument that genocide was and is occurring. Um, it's also the case that it's viewed as an American determination that somehow this is an American government response or an American government-driven response. Uh, the European Union, the Parliament of the European Union, declared in September 2004, at the same time as Powell was testifying before Congress, by a vote of 566 to 6, that what was occurring in Darfur was tantamount to genocide. Well, tantamount means equal in significance, too. So if it's tantamount to genocide, I don't see the difference, except you haven't used the G word, per se. You've used a, a phrase rather than the word, tantamount to genocide. What does that do? It frees you from an obligation, or any obligations you incur, or feel you may incur, under the Genocide Convention, which full title is the 1948 UN Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Uh, the Europeans evidently, or at least the Parliament of the European Union, did not want to commit itself. Uh, and so they used this weaselly phrase. Uh, uh, but uh, senior officials of the German, French, and British governments have used the word genocide to describe what's going on in Darfur. A number of uh, human rights organizations have, as, as have a number of advocacy organizations, um, most genocide scholars I talk to uh, see that, what it, uh, not necessarily Sudan specialists, but from what they know, see genocide occurring. Um, so I think the United States didn't have any trouble recognizing it as genocide, but was uh, unprepared to take the next step and do something to prevent it, which is the first word, is prevent and punish. It's not um, uh, punish, or the emphasis is on punishment, it's on prevention. Uh, that's what Lemkin, who fashioned the 48 Convention, really, almost single-handedly, was most interested.